This Bible study is going to be titled What do I do now that I am saved? Uh, it's a question I asked myself and uh, had to work out when I was first saved. So this is a study, a Bible study um, of all the components within salvation the order of our salvation and the purpose within our individual um, afforded liberty that uh, we've each been given and afforded uh, because we've been purchased by the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ we've each been afforded uh, the liberty uh, freedom and peace and the, and the Holy Spirit um, so I'm going to be looking at all the components and the stages and the scriptures to expound and uh, edify the believer and the student like myself and like anybody listening um, I prayed that this uh, study would be uh, to the Lord's glory, to the edification of any believer, uh, any stage, at any need, and I pray that it would be a blessing, um, a holy kiss to anybody studying along. When I was first saved, there was uh, nobody, no, no Christian believers uh, around me. So I had a few lessons to learn uh, and lots of experience to go through. So I'm going to compile all that experience and share it into this lesson um, there was no welcome committee no no open arms apart from uh, the Lord and so I hope this is a, an extended welcome to any brother and sister and the start of a scripture in Luke chapter 15 verse 10 which is in context it's the Lord speaking at the parables of the lost sheep the piece of silver and of the prodigal son uh, so in this context it, the Lord was referring to the ungrafted Israel returning back to the vine uh, for the believer, for the Gentile's sake, it would be, you could look at it and apply it to the first time that person repents and comes unto salvation and is grafted in. Um, verse 10, likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Got another scripture. Acts 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 28. Um, if you'd like to study along, please uh, do so because reading the scriptures uh, makes a big difference than um, as well as hearing them being read. And I could read in error uh, I could make a mistake so it's important to check what any person is uh, claiming in service in service to the Lord teaching because uh, I'm not the teacher uh, the Holy Spirit's the teacher and I could make a mistake in the in the word which I often get my words muddled up so Please be mindful of that. Um, Acts 2, 28. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy, thy countenance. 
So um, let's uh, we we've each received the uh, the joy and uh, the Holy Spirit and the, the the gift of the Holy Spirit and eternal life. And the Holy Spirit teaches us all things. All the lessons are from the Holy Spirit, and the Word teaches all of us. Uh, because of Jesus Christ, we have the we have the written word, and we have the Holy Spirit, and we have the testimony of uh, God the Father. And the Lord teaches us all that we need to know. And God has taught us all things by His by His Son, by the revealing of His Son. And the Lord Jesus has revealed His Word, and, and we have a faithful copy in the Holy. Holy Bible and the King James and the uh, the Word, the Scriptures, and all all safe believers have received Him. They've received His Word. Uh, let me just read a Scripture. First John. Chapter two. Uh, let me read verse 25 to 27. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is truth and is no lie and even as it have taught you ye shall abide in him and now little children abide in him that when he shall appear we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming if ye know that he is righteous, ye know that every one that doeth righteousness is born of him. So it's quite clear there that we don't um, a believer doesn't need anybody to teach them because they have the Lord. Uh, if they're abiding with the Lord, they have the Lord. Uh, they're justified and they're sanctified by the Lord and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, by the Lord, will teach us all things. First Corinthians, uh, chapter two. Uh, verse sixteen. For who have known the mind of, uh, of the Lord? I forgot the right scripture. Yes, who, for who have known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. And that was a um, very important le lesson that I had to realise and discover um, in my walk. And here's another lesson. Um, Proverbs 3 So I like to give these to um, share, share my experience I'm not an expert but I like to share my experience with other, other believers coming up the trail coming up the way that um, the testimony that I've been given, I, it's my desire to share that um, because that's such a blessing, such a gift, and I don't want to um, not not share it. And uh, it's a joy to share it, and I think it's the right thing to do to share it. And I think that desire was all was in me. But I needed the the word to align that desire, to know that desire, and to not waver, and to know what was counter that desire, 
and against that desire which is why we have the scriptures which is why we have the written word and one of the lessons I had to learn was to trust the Lord over other other people's opinions other, other people that I looked to and thought oh they must know what they're talking about oh, because they're you know a claim to be a man of God or that they're an authority on, on the word therefore they must know what, what they're talking about um, so the lesson I had to learn was to trust in the Lord and his word solely above um, the flesh, above man uh, verse 5 trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths be not wise in thine own eyes fear the Lord and depart from evil Jeremiah 17 <coughs> excuse me read 5 to 15 verse 5 to 15 um, thus saith the Lord Cursed be the man that trusteth in man And make flesh his arm And whose heart departeth from the Lord For he shall be like the heath in the desert And shall not see when good cometh But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness In a salt land and not inhabited Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh. But her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all, all things and desperately wicked who can know it I the Lord search the heart I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings as the partridge sitteth on eggs and hatcheth them not so he that getteth riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days and at his end shall be a fall. A glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Behold, they say unto me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. So, um, a glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. So from the beginning what we know was the word and from from eternity which we've been grafted into is the place of our sanctuary um, and it shows the contrast there of uh, the, the man or the woman uh, who puts their trust in the Lord and the promise of that and then the contrast to the man whether they believe in the Lord or not the, the consequences of uh, not trusting in the Lord and a bit at the end there of Israel's heart saying uh, behold they say unto me where is the word of the Lord let it come now because they didn't uh, Israel didn't believe therefore it didn't see the, the living God in uh, ministering in in front of them so we are 
we've received uh, the Lord. Uh, let's look at um, the confirmation of the Holy Scriptures of Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 I grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption uh, so a confirmation there to the believer not and a warning not to grieve the Holy Spirit which has whereby ye are sealed sealed unto the day of your redemption of redemption let's look at uh, John chapter 14 verse 26 but the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatever I have said unto you. So there's two promises. One, the promise of the Holy Ghost that would come, and in Ephesians, the confirmation that, and and First John chapter 2, the confirmation that the believers received the Holy Spirit and they're sealed unto the day of their redemption um, so there's the safe believer and the, the lesson and question was well what do I do now that I'm saved well there's um, it's important to learn things in order so there's an order God is orderly let's read uh, First Corinthians Of uh, scriptures I'd like to get through. First Corinthians, um, chapter fourteen, verse forty. Let all things be done decently and in order. So there's some instruction from. Uh, the Apostle Paul, the uh, the Lord's anointed, uh, chosen, faithful witness. Let all things be done decently and in order. Reiterating just what uh, the Holy Spirit taught Paul, what the Lord taught Paul. Let's go to another scripture. Second uh, Timothy. Verse chapter 2, verse 6. The husbandman that laboureth must be first partaker of the fruits. So, before you begin to be able to labour for the Lord, to be a servant, to express the testimony that the Lord's given you, you have to first receive the testimony because you can't g g believe and not receive or believe in vain and not receive the Lord and the sealing and then proceed to teach you first because you'll be teaching in error you first have to receive that testimony which has been taught from the first, from the beginning, from the author and then the husbandman that laboureth must be first partaker of the fruits, and that would that would continue on through all experience. There's no good me teaching or sharing something that I'm attempting to teach that I haven't experienced it myself. Uh, so it's also speaking of. Um, 
going through like the like, like the uh, the apostles they went through the order and they learnt the lessons and then they when they wrote their uh, doctrine and their testimonies they laid it all down for us as a pattern in an order and you have to pick up that pattern in the order it's established and the first point of call is the door is, is repentance unto salvation and then after salvation you take the next step and then the next step and this is what um, we'll be looking at um, so um, I've written down some verses uh, now there's uh, references to working work out your salvation with fear and trembling and also to lay hold of your salvation also to find yourself approved by the word and by faith by experience and there's mention of settle to be settled and to rest and then to go on to good works. Um, let's read. I've chosen uh, a pattern of Paul's uh, conversion to examine. Just briefly look over the, uh, the moment where the Lord called him, uh, Peter, uh, blinded him in the way and spoke to Paul. And Paul would, would, saw the Lord. He testifies in the word that he saw the Lord. Um, so let's go to Acts chapter 9. And I'm going to read verse 1 to 20. to 20 and Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any in this way whether they were men or women he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem and as he journeyed he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shone round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me do to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul rose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand, and brought him into Damascus and he was he was three days without sight and neither did eat nor drink and there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias and to him said the Lord in a vision Ananias and he said behold I am here Lord and the Lord said unto him arise and go into the street which is called straight and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold he prayeth. And have seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he have authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is the chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles, and kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. 
and Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said brother Saul the Lord even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest have sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost and immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized and when he had received meat he was strengthened then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus and straight away he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the son of God so we we see there in order there the Paul being struck in the way then he being taken to the side to recovery period and uh, Ananias come in with the the news so in service to the Lord to to save Paul to baptize him to baptize him with the Holy Spirit and Paul is baptized with the Holy Spirit and he spends uh, and when he received me he was strengthened then then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus certain days doesn't say how long Paul was uh, uh, with the disciples so Paul would be learning and re taking it all in resting what he just had experienced and you must understand that Paul would, would have had a vast knowledge of uh, the scriptures and the law and uh, Judaism and, and the traditions and the history of his people so um, he was probably much more equipped than most people ever ever could be to for that uh, for that calling obviously the Lord chose him for a, you know a purpose because he was the right person for that job um, and he spent uh, certain days with the disciples and straight away he preached Christ after that straight away he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the son of God Right, so let's have a look at um, our own salvations. Uh, let's read a scripture first. Psalm 139. Uh, verse 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. I'm going to read that again. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well wonderful scripture to to meditate on and ponder I am fearfully and wonderfully made um, let's read another scripture 2nd Corinthians chapter 7 Verse 15 uh, And his inward affection is more abundant toward you Whilst he remembereth the obedience of you all How with fear and trembling ye received him Incredible And his inward affection is more abundant toward you whilst he remembereth the obedience of you all, how with fear and trembling ye received him. So, the gospel of repentance, 
towards the Lord is I believe a a gift and I believe in my experience the Holy Spirit is working with people seeking the truth now when I came to faith and salvation I was oh, a wretched man that I am um, I was in a, a, a wreck I don't know I don't I, I think it's important not 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 to compare with other people um, other believers uh, but when I was saved um, and saved in the state I was found in I was a, a mess I was diminished responsibility really and I didn't really realize that the Lord had to show me many things um, and the Holy Spirit brought me to repentance it brought brought me to my knees and to to fear the Lord and and to although it was a uh, I, I I was kind of lifted on 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 the back of on the back of his shoulders on the on an eagle's wings. It was a a joyous experience to approach solely the Lord, having nobody else between myself and and who I was calling on in in, in my heart and and uh, out you know vocally calling out. Um, in fear and trembling it was a frightening and fearful experience because I, I had nowhere else to turn to and the Holy Spirit was with me and um, if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit I think I would have quaked to death um, it was the Holy Spirit that was with me and holding me and brought me to that point and that was the point where I, I called out to the Lord and he answered and saved me praise be to God um, so we start with fear and trembling um, let's read First Peter chapter 5 um, but God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. That the trial of your uh, three, first Peter chapter one, verse seven. Also speaking about the trial of your faith, uh, that, that the trial of your faith, which be much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honour and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Um, let's read another scripture from First Peter. First Peter chapter four um, First Peter chapter four verse twelve Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in so much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. So, um, after we're saved, it's written that there's a fiery trial. And uh, let's go to, let's reread verse, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 7. Um, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than go of gold that perisheth now think of gold though it be tried with fire now think of gold in the fire 
that gold will perish, that will that gold will melt. But uh, you won't melt, your soul won't melt, your existence won't melt, your heart won't melt. That you might be found unto praise and honour and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So the trial of our faith is like a, a refining fire. The gold would perish in it, but we won't perish in it. We'll be cleansed and purified by the fire. Think it not, uh, chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Right, let's read um, Philippians chapter 2 and then tie this up. Philippians 2 Verse 12, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So we read it at the beginning that we are, we enter in, we are saved at the beginning with fear and trembling. So working out our salvation, our salvation has nothing to do with our works or what we do. It's worked out on the cross by the Lord and he's atoned for us individually. So wherever you were saved, whatever state you were saved in, the Lord has saved you found you in that state and worked it out on the cross he worked he suffered all all things for you and he's the remedy and straightened out your life from beginning to end as a free gift and you remain that sinful person but now complete in Christ by his wholeness, by his righteousness and you're justified and sanctified and uh, working out our salvation well our salvation's already been worked out but in my experience it's also what was worked out so I think that is a consideration um, and that's something that will either be um, apparent, made apparent to uh, the individual because everybody is completely unique if you if we liken it to a massive um, wilderness, a jungle and all our souls are, are if you imagine like uh, pieces of paper uh, blown over the jungle and they land all scattered like all blown in the wind like chaff and scattered all over the wilderness in different random places and every one of those pieces of paper is lost in this dense vast uh, jungle and the Lord comes and cuts with his machete a uh, straight line all the way through the jungle and a, a road in and a road out the only road in the only road out and then from that road he cuts in towards each piece of paper and then brings that piece of paper to the straight and narrow so we all come to the straight and narrow way the same way we're all saved the same way but we've all come in a different state found in a different place scattered over the jungle over the wilderness so we each come with uh, 
life package or the baggage and uh, I think part of the component is a personal thing what the Lord has worked out for us what he saved us from what are our sins what were our sins what is our weaknesses what are, where are our transgressions where are our faults I have many faults I, um, uh, I've sinned much um, so we we each work out our salvation and receive that salvation at the beginning and that's what's worked out and that's what um, becomes apparent and we evaluate I think on a we live by faith we evaluate ourselves we learn in sanctification through faith on a day-to-day -day walk and we learn things about ourselves I, I'm not, and I'm, I can only speak from my own experience. I discovered things I wasn't aware of, um, things that were unfolding, uh, difficulties, faults, so many things. And uh, um, and as I grew in a relationship um, and communication in faith um, I started to learn things about myself and the Lord revealed things personally regarding my life so um, that, I think that's part of working out salvation with fear and trembling but it is it, worked out by the Lord and we should trust the Lord um, so, it speak, so let's review the components <coughs> excuse me um, so we enter. We're first. We're safe. We're in. We we enter in with fear and trembling. Um, and uh, there's a fiery trial. But let's look at um, entering into the Lord and resting. Let me read the scripture again. Uh, for First Peter, uh, chapter five, verse ten. But the God of all grace, who have called us unto His eternal glory by Jesus Christ, by Christ Jesus. After that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle ye. So, remember that um, order. Um, but the God of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Right, let's read Hebrews, let's go to Hebrews. Chapter 18 and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest but to them that believe not let's read some context uh, so for some when they had heard did provoke howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses so the Lord's talking of the children of Israel entering into the promised land and he's comparing that to salvation for some when they had heard did provoke howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses but with whom was he grieved forty years was it not with them that had sinned whose carcasses fell in the wilderness and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest but to them that believe not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. So that, comparing that in the, from the old covenant and, and, and looking uh, in the context of the New Testament, you can't be saved unless you believe. You can't enter into the Lord's rest unless you believe. 
unless you believe you're not going to appropriate his atonement and he's going to open the door and bring you into his rest let's read um, Hebrews 4 verse 1 let us therefore fear lest the promise being left of us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it so let's read some more scriptures let's read three, uh, verse 3 and 4 for we which have believed do enter into rest as he said as I have sworn in my wrath if they shall enter into my rest although the works were finished from the foundation of the world for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise and God did rest the seventh day from all his works so the Lord being the eternal Sabbath the living Sabbath um, finished his works and they were finished from the beginning because God's eternal and it was because of sin brought his works into uh, effect but they were but God has always been perfect so his works have been finished from eternity so God is um, finished his work and that was demonstrated on the cross to show that his works were finished and that uh, he was um, interceded on our behalf but he didn't need to do anything he was always perfect he'd done that solely for for mankind for to save mankind from from hell and death um, so we've entered into his rest and uh, we've entered into the eternal Sabbath we've entered in with, with, with Christ and rest with him because his works were finished from eternity um, so let's look at um, I've listed uh, some scriptures of the heaven, where it speaks of heavenly places um, Ephesians so let's look at the um, what that spiritually that uh, that means Ephesians 1 uh, verse 3 blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Ephesians 1 verse 20 which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Let's read in verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Let's look at uh, verse... Ephesians 2 verse 6 um, let's read verse 4 to 6 but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins have quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved and have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus so our spirit positionally is with in Christ with Christ in heavenly places those who have entered into rest are in heavenly places in Christ Jesus while they remain in on earth in their flesh they're already finished they're done they're saved they're eternally saved and complete by Jesus Christ and we, uh, reside in heavenly places Ephesians 3 verse 10 um, let's read verse 
verse 9 uh, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world have been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord there we go so we are blessed in um, to have the mystery of revealed which was manifest from the beginning uh, which the prophets um, marveled to look into and didn't didn't receive the gift of the Holy Ghost like uh, the saint does, like the New Testament receives the mystery. The mystery is our Lord Jesus Christ, and the the gift of the Holy Ghost that we have fellowship with God the Father and our Saviour Jesus Christ, who we are adopted by, born. Born by, born by His Spirit, born by His grace in heavenly places. Um, we look at some more components. Um, uh, mentions uh, lay hold of your salvation. Um, what what exactly does lay hold mean? Take hold of. Uh, take the bull by the horns. Seize the day. Uh, climb up on the horse and sit on the saddle and hold on and ride along lay hold I think it means um, to understand what it is you've taken hold of what you've been given to lay hold of that and to continually lay hold of that uh, let's look at the scriptures see what the, the scriptures say um, let's read Hebrews uh, chapter 6 just to clarify a point uh, verse 18 that by two immutable things in which it, it, it was impossible for God to lie we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us so by two two witnesses any two witnesses that are um, that by any two immutable witness immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us so Christ has laid gone into heavenly return to heavenly places who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us so consider what that means who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us and also by two immutable things or so what's two immutable things we have a strong consolation um, a witness of Christ we have the, the testimony of the word we have two more than where we have two immutable things we have a testimony of a sure that that is true and that truth comes from Christ who's uh, fled into heavenly places to lay hold of uh, the hope set before us which is eternal life so uh, an immutable thing, think of your left hand and your right, you've got uh, two immutable witnesses there. You can't, have, you can't have right without left and you can't have right uh, left without right. So there's two immutable things. You can't, there's, no, there's no other false witnesses that could dispel that immutable witness because we know that's a fact because it's right in front of our face um, and left is being called left and the right has been called right and they're immutable things 
So that's a reference to the witness of the scriptures, the testimonies of the word of the Holy Spirit. Um, so let's look at the component of uh, lay hold and its application. First Timothy. Chapter 6 Verse 12 So Paul writing to um, Writing to Timothy Fight the good fight of faith Lay hold on eternal life Whereunto thou art also called And hast professed a good profession Before many witnesses So Paul was reminding Timothy fight the good fight of faith lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called so Timothy is already called and is laying hold of eternal life because he's fighting the good fight of faith lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Look at uh, verse 19. Uh, let's read some context. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who give us, giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Here's that word again, lay hold on eternal life. So, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation. So, laying up in store is... Uh, putting aside or building up a surplus of food or whatever it is you're putting into store for themselves a good foundation so that's building upon the found uh, uh, the good fa a good foundation which is Christ and uh, building good things upon that foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Um, now we know the scriptures, you can't lose, once you've received your eternal life, you can't lose it. So, that they may lay hold on eternal life, that they may arrive um, laying hold of the eternal life they are about to receive, um, rather than arrive in in heaven and you've not laid hold of what it is you've received so you be out of the way a bit so that the scriptures are saying to you Paul saying to Timothy lay up in store for themselves a good foundation start off good foundation building up laying up in store learning starting if i could go back and uh, start again i'd do things a lot differently but i wouldn't have that hindsight so um i could only um share my experience or or advice or or, or wishes for or hopes for other people not not to uh not lay up in store anything or struggle to be able to do that um, do that um, slowly rather than as much as quickly as I would have liked to um, so if you if you're a safe believer and you, you're young and uh, you know take take note of this um, don't follow me please don't follow me but follow after uh, those those in the scriptures uh, Timothy and Paul 
lay up in laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life um, so I think that's what lay hold that means that's like working out your salvation fear and trembling so that's knowing coming to know that you're saved and then continuing on in that knowledge uh, like put on the helmet of your salvation lay hold of your salvation take hold of it and walk with it that's how um, I, I, I might be wrong but that's how I interpret that scripture um, take everything that's available to you take it So uh, that we've we've looked at the um, many components how we're saved um, that we enter into rest and that we should uh, work out our work out our salvation with fear and trembling and lay hold. Um, but now let's look at the components of what what why we are saved and what that entails. Um, now there's the overall heart and mind of the will who desires to have all men to be saved and we're inclusive in, in that heart that we desire all men to be saved for our saviour for his glory, for his love, for his burden um, so that's within each of us and it's all our each and every one has a responsibility in their individual salvation to express that. Let's read some scriptures. So let's look at the Lord's heart of what... Now I can't say what he individually requires for you, only generally in what he requires for all of us to do. But I can't point out what it is person A should be doing or what person B should be doing or what person C can be doing all that we can do is work out what we should be doing what the Lord wishes what his will is for us individually within the context of sharing that, that burden that responsibility for him so let's read some scriptures um, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God have before ordained that we should walk in them for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God have before ordained that we should walk in them so God before creation before we ever existed knew that we would exist knew that we would be saved and give us a uh, has a purpose for us in, in those works uh, unto good works which God hath before ordained in, in Christ so we are brought into those works um, and we're saved unto good works uh, that's, that's the Lord's purpose for good works um, but not out of order we can't do good works before we're saved to be saved or to receive any reward for that because that's not our reward our, um, only the Lord can give an increase who can who can add any cubit upon their stature um, so we are saved unto good works so we can't do any good works until we are saved and um, we are saved for that purpose to serve the Lord's good works 
and let's go to Second Timothy. Verse 14, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So another com important component there, the scriptures, um, that the use of the scriptures is to thoroughly furnish all unto all good works, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Uh, let's look at a contrast in uh, Titus chapter 1, verse 16. Uh, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable, disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. So there's a contrast of uh, people serving the Lord in, in good works but their works don't show the fruit of salvation which works deny the Lord and so they're vain and unfounded being abominable, disobedient making every good work reprobate and tainted and corrupt so uh, the Bible believer, the saved believer is equipped, has the mind of Christ, has the gifts, has all the spiritual blessings as the scriptures we've just read revealed. And we have the Holy Word for that purpose, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Um, let's look at Titus 2, reaffirming that we're saved for good works. Uh, Titus 2 verse 14 who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority let no man despise thee so again it clarifies that we've been saved unto good works and remember the order of the scripture of the fiery trial and what would happen. So there's an order before we're saved that we move on to good works. And as we walk in faith. Uh, what's the scripture? Um, 2 Corinthians. No. Um, First Peter, chapter five, verse ten. But the grace of all, uh, but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. So, a trial of our faith. Um, now my my trial was simply by lack of knowledge and lack of establishment lack of lack of understanding of the holy word i was ignorant naive and green like any believer um i didn't have any 
pre-education regarding the scriptures. I knew little of the world, little of history. I didn't really pay any attention to anything really. I was distract. I was in La La Land. Um, so my trial was free. My trial of faith, my precious trial, was through transgression and uh, through that adversity because uh, the Lord is just. Now let me read a scripture. I, I think this clarifies a lot of things. Uh, Psalm 25. read it all um. <clears throat> excuse me Psalm 25 unto thee O Lord do I lift up my soul O my God I trust in thee let me not be ashamed let not mine enemies triumph over me Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Show me thy paths, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth, and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. Unto thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies, and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old, Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he choose in the way that he shall choose. Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His, shall, his soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn thee unto me, and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. O bring thou me out of my distress, my distresses. Look upon mine affliction and my pain, and forgive all my sins. Consider mine enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. O keep my soul, and deliver, deliver me, let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Much in that, uh, that psalm. Um, but I want to look at verse 9, uh, well, verse 8, 9, 10. Um, the Lord teaches sinners in the way. Now we've all come to the Lord's sinners. He teaches sinners in the way. So, uh, uh, regarding our fiery trial, all the paths of the Lord are mercy. Um, let's go to verse 9. The meek will he guide in judgment. So, a meek is somebody who's honest. Um, so an honest person, a meek person, a humble person that's come to the Lord and saved, that's a sinner, the Lord will teach them in judgment. Now the Lord can't deny his judgment. So if you're a, even if you're a saved believer and you transgress, there's going to be a, a judgment, a consequence. And the Lord will use that as a, to teach you that he will be upholding you because he's merciful all the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth as unto such as keep his covenant those who keep his covenant are simply those who've believed and believe and continue to believe in, in Jesus Christ and uh,
his covenant and his testimony simply that and the Lord is merciful to those in judgment and he teaches sinners in the way that constrain to you know uh, sin or transgression and error and the Lord will judge that person he will chastise that person and bring them into mercifully and lovingly bring them into line um, so that is basically a believer has to start has to learn that pattern and that that pattern will be established early as they walk in faith and they will always have that in their memory as they will always have that m moment of entering in then they will have that experience of that fiery trial after they've entered in and then the Lord will begin his work and that is working towards what he saved you for his good pleasure unto good works so that's part of the fiery trial First uh, Peter uh, chapter 5 verse 10 but the grace of all God who have called us unto the eternal glory of Christ Jesus after that you have suffered a while make you perfect through that suffering establish strengthen because the experience will strengthen you it will strengthen your relationship and trust you will gain more of, more of you will experience more of the grace of the Lord working and he will settle you by by his own his own hand by his own what he's already done for you what he's already given you so what he's taking you through what he's showing you that he's already done and what he's doing that the trial of your uh, first peter verse 1 chapter 1 verse 7 that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perish that it be tried with fire might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. First uh, Peter chapter four verse twelve again, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though something strange thing happened to you. But right, you know, but rather we should um, embrace it and cherish that experience. Or if we're going through that experience, to realise that it. it it's a wonderful thing in the wisdom of the Lord that you go through that uh, fiery trial as Peter went through it as all the all saints all the apostles and all the saints go through that pattern that fiery trial think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you right So we've looked at many components unto good works. Um, let's read some more scriptures. Titus chapter 3. So, basically covered the whole pattern. Um, as, as we read in Paul, what Paul would have experienced. And it's important for us each to measure um, what our own experience is. It's to trust the Lord in, in what, our ex what our experiences are and what our good work should be uh, rather than copying somebody else. Um, imitating somebody but coming to discover those works yourself um, Titus 3 uh, verse 8 this is a faithful saying of these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they, they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works these things are good and profitable unto men so bear that in mind. Uh, Hebrews 10. Uh, verse 24. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. 
that's another thing to consider consider one another and pro to provoke unto love and to good works I think the best way to provoke someone unto good works is by doing good works and being an example um, and that 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 that's inspiring and that, that comes with power and grace and that moves you to desire the same uh, let's read some more let's look at the Lord's heart in a in, in within our good works, uh, his purpose for those good works, his intention within us. Um, go to Luke chapter twelve. Verse thirty-two. Fear not, little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Let's look at Ephesians 1. Hold that thought. Um, fear not, little flock, for it is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Right, Ephesians one um, verse five uh, let's go verse four uh, verse three four and five uh, blessed be the, uh, the god and father of our lord jesus christ who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy without blame before him in love having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to his good pleasure of his will so it's the Lord's good pleasure and it's the Lord's good will what to do with us and that doesn't rob us of our liberty um, Nine. I read verse 9 let's look at uh, Philippians that's another scripture in this line uh, to back it up Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 for it is God which worketh in you both to will and do of his good pleasure. So we've got another scripture, Second Thessalonians. Uh, chapter 1, verse 11. Wherefore also we pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of his calling, and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ so it's the Lord's good pleasure and will and desire to fulfill his works in us what he's done on the cross not only for us personally, but towards others. And that's his good pleasure to do that for us. And he's afforded us the wonderful, the frightening opportunity, daunting opportunity, but a wonderful opportunity to express that faith, to express our testimonies, what his good pleasure is within us. That we've received and to do to discover that good pleasure we live we need to walk in faith we need to continue on as we first started that first 
that first port of call, that first love, where we first receive the Lord. We need to continue on in that step daily. Uh, let's read uh, Romans um, chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed, from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Galatians 3, Galatians 3, uh, verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. So we're justified by faith, not by the works of the law. And for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. So grace is revealed daily from faith to each step of faith. The just shall live by faith. Uh, let's read Hebrews 10, verse 38. Hebrews 10, 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So there's a, a caution or warning that the uh, just uh, reaffirming again the just live by faith shall shall they will do they do live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall the Lord's soul will have uh, no pleasure in him or in them. So there's a warning that, bearing in mind, we're saved unto the Lord's good pleasure. It'd be, it'd be disappointing and hurtful to him if we don't continue on as, and take hold of what it is he desires to give us, which is his glory realised. It's to his glory, not our glory, but it's his glory revealed in us. And that's his good pleasure. And that is learnt, discovered, and taken hold of through faith, through the daily living of exercising of our faith in him. And, and what he teaches us in faith along the way. We don't need any man to teach us. He will guide our footsteps. He is driving. He's upholding us on the horse. He's put us on the horse. He stood us on the rock. He's leading us by the hand and he, uh, he carries us on his shoulders. He walks alongside us holding our hand. Um, let's read uh, Psalm 23. Beautiful scripture, Psalm 23. Uh, verse 2. Let's read 1 and 2. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So there's a wonderful promise for any saint. Um, 
now let's sum it all up in a nutshell we'll read a verse where it has all been summed up in a nutshell for the believer Proverbs um, 11.30 The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and he that winneth souls is wise so that's a very encompassing scripture given there by the, the Lord and revealed by the Holy Spirit um, so it's important that we um, live by faith and we study the word that's one of the most important things I learned in my my testimony as as any believer will testify that the word of God is paramount to the testimony received um, and the daily walk of faith and all that you need is contained within the holy scriptures and uh, the important thing is to be a Berean, to study the word not, and to, however hard or difficult you find that, all you need to do is pray and ask and the Lord will help you. Whatever understanding you have, the Lord will reach you and edify you. The Holy Spirit will quicken you and teach you all, all needful things that you need when you need them if you apply yourself, if you look to he who is leading and supplying your need and every every one and every need. Let's look at the script uh Second Timothy again. We've read it once, well, gonna read it again. Second Timothy. So this is one of the major components of salvation is uh, the Holy Scriptures it's not a book that saves us it's the author of the book and the words in the book are from the, the living author the living water preserved for us in the book which is our salvation which is Jesus Christ which is the word of Jesus Christ uh, 2 Timothy 2 uh, Again But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and um, thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them and from and that from a child Thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Of course that's speaking to Timothy. He's known the Scriptures from a child. We've all known of the Scriptures from a child. But we've known the Scriptures since we were saved. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So that com the Scriptures confirm that which is which it is that we've received and who we've received it from all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfectly for, perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works um, let's read Galatians chapter 6 exceptionally important to study and discover for yourself and to learn it's the most wonderful blessing uh, Galatians 6 verse 4 but let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another for every man shall bear his own burden so it's everybody's responsibility to to learn to walk and discover and learn 
but let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in, in himself alone so to learn something by yourself there's so much wisdom in going through those motions even if you make mistakes because by learning mistakes it's how you grow and how you learn and when you learn it's the most rewarding experience and nobody can take that away from you it's yours alone, it's a precious personal thing that you've learned. It's your life, it's your experience and that is a, a, a treasure to take hold of. Um, Acts 17. Uh, so this is a re-emphasising the importance of uh, the scriptures and how vital they are for the believer for all believers uh, you can't do anything without it you'll you'll be stagnant without the scriptures you'll go in it you'll go astray without the scriptures you may be saved appropriate the atonement never read your scriptures and you will never appreciate what it is you've received and you will cast it behind your back in it you're in danger of casting it behind your back your salvation which I I transgressed I was in that under that condemnation that I didn't realize and that, that brought me to my senses when I realized my transgression when the Lord taught me um, and then I I, I, I slowly gained the knowledge of the scriptures and that built me up, that strengthened me that comforted me that gave me rejoicing in myself alone which I testify and can rejoice and be refreshed and reminded of those lessons by doing this, this is a blessing to share Acts 17 verse 11 these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so let's read some context uh, just before and and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea who come in thither went into the synagogue of the Jews these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures daily whether those things were so so um, these, these believers whenever they heard somebody teach the scriptures or, or claiming to be a servant a minister of God they searched the scriptures to check, to measure to make sure that what was being taught was in line with the Lord's heart, mind and will within the revealed scriptures that they'd received. So they knew the pattern of receiving the word, studying the word which they'd received and then anything coming in the name of the word to check it by the word to see if it was of the word or if it was not. So that's one of the vital components of our salvation, is the study of the scriptures. Um, read one more scripture. Uh, oh, let's go to Psalm 19, because that re-emphasizes Second Timothy, um, Psalm nineteen. Which is more clarification and more testimony to the the gift that the every believer has received. Um, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. 
There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out for all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them have he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom cometh out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoice in the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring for ever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover by them is thy servant warned, and in, in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So um, the script, the Lord is equipped all believers and the blessings and rewards for remaining faithful in our testimonies uh, perhaps can't be stressed enough and the, the most important thing for a believer to grow in the word is to be able to defend themselves and uh, let's read 1st Corinthians because there's so many pitfalls for a new believer and they, their fiery trial is being tossed to and fro by all different opinions, different experiences you come across that you've not come across before and this is all part of a believer's walk right, 1st Corinthians 11 Verse 19, For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. So how are they, how are those? So firstly, that there, there must be also heresies among you. So there must be falseness, because the Lord knows all men. He knows all hearts. And he knows those who deliberately teach rubbish and lies and he also knows those who are in error well meaning that teach uh, heresies who are who perhaps are saved perhaps not saved more than likely not saved for there must be also heresies among you so there's wisdom in that that we have the scriptures that they which are approved may be made manifest among you how are they manifest like the Bereans because they, we have the faithful word so we can measure with the word those believers teachers that are approved teaching the approved word and those te those heresies that's one of the most important things that we have the scriptures to correct us to teach us, to straighten us, to straighten others. Um, let's read some more scriptures. Um, let's look at some more components of, uh, of our salvation and in the context of uh, what we should be doing and uh, how to do those things. Let's look at uh, Philippians chapter 4 
verse 11. Now that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. That's another scripture, 1 Timothy 6 verse 8. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Um, so, uh, content to be content with what we have is very another key ingredient. Uh, not that I speak in respect of one, for I've learned in whatsoever state I am, I am therewith to be content. So, if we got little. We should be content with little, but if we're blessed with lots, we should be content with that. We should be content with whatever we're found with or blessed with. Um, here's the bottom line: and having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. First Timothy six, verse eight. Um, again in Hebrews. Hebrews 13, excuse me, verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. There it is again. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So whatever state we're found in, whatever state we're safe in, or whatever state we are in, in our walking faith, to be content. And look at some more um, components of our faith, our salvation, unto good works. And other than contentment, um, we, we've been given um, authority we've been within our liberty we've been given authority by the word um, and we've been given advice on how to live in the word um, contentment is one let's look at um, another one second Timothy. Chapter 2, verse 24. Uh, and a servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God preadventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and they that may and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will um, so should we, we should not strive to be content, to be gentle, patient uh, the servant of the Lord must not strive but be gentle unto all men, how to teach, patient um, let's look at um, our liberty now I read Psalm 25 on the return to Psalm 25 uh, and just for one verse one particular verse in Psalm 25 uh, verse 12 what man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. Okay. Romans um, chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 21. Because the creature itself also shall be 
delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So there we go, we've been granted the, uh, the glorious liberty being the children of God. Here's some warnings in 1 Corinthians about our liberty. Chapter 8, verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. So there we go. Uh, to take heed that we use that, that what we do within our, with our walks. Um, because if you use your liberty for flesh, for doing what you want, what you like, that's out of the mind of um, teaching the gospel, sharing the, your testimony for the Lord to bring all men unto himself, to take part in that service with your testimony could potentially lead other people, young believers, weak believers, astray by looking to your example, you may, you, may, you may be leavened, you may be uh, leavened, and you may leaven those those believers that are looking up to you. And um, got to be so. I was saying earlier how um, I came to realise what a, um, what I'd been afforded, and the fearfulness of being answerable to the the liberty I've been given. And what, what, thinking that through, what happens if I arrive before the Lord and I've mis mis I've abused my liberty, um, and I haven't, His will hasn't been fulfilled in me as I arrive, and that that's what um, the scriptures are warning. Uh, Take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 uh, verse 17 uh, Now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty so there's only liberty where the spirit of the Lord is and so the only place to claim that spirit and liberty is walking in the spirit of the Lord so if we we be granted that liberty and we're outside of the Lord's spirit by not serving the Lord in in His will. We are out of the way because uh, the liberty that we've, has been afforded us is for the Lord's sole purpose, for His good pleasure, for His His His, uh, his works, His finished works towards all men. Uh, let's look at some. Um, opposition to liberty and where these um, problems come from in, in the body and in the, in the Christian church which the Lord always knew about uh, Galatians 2 chapter 4 and that because of the false brethren unawares brought in who came in privately privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Spy out our liberty to come and look what we're up to in our in our lives and our choices. To me get the measure of people, get a personal measure on people, and then and then think of something to teach to trip that person up, that that person will follow and be led into bondage. So there's a a warning against uh, the liberty that we've been afforded. So, 
Um, let's look at another scripture. Galatians, the stone Galatians 5. Let's go to Galatians 5. Excuse me. Galatians 5, chap, verse 13. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. So our uh, liberty is for service, for the Lord's service in love towards one another and the world, obviously. Um, and not for our own desires, not for our own go, you know, doing what we want to do of our lives. You know, we we can do, we can live our lives, but it has to be in line with service to the Lord's end, which is so preaching the gospel, um, not so we can be live. You, you can go on holiday. <laughs> a luxurious holiday to preach the gospel not to have a luxurious holiday that's your liberty to do so that may be unprofitable and unproductive like that was just a suggestion but um, we have liberty we've been granted liberty within our salvation how to focus the Lord's heart is a uh, in is it individually that's our liberty that's what's been afforded us that's what i found so daunting um, but when i took hold of it and it, as i am experiencing it i can say it's a wonderful joy and a reward and something i'd only desire to encourage anyone else to experience the same thing that perhaps is struggling or hasn't yet experienced that to continue on and towards in that and towards that to the high prize in the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, let's go to uh, James one. James 1, chapter 25 But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Um, and I can testify to that, and... Uh, I pray I can continue to testify of that and remain testifying of that. Let's read on. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bride if not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So, um, our liberty is for service um, to, unto good works, whatever, whatever that is within our, in our lives and our choices, in, in, in how that we, we choose and how we are steered in that liberty towards service. Um, Uh, let's look at Acts 20, I just, um, what the Holy Spirit taught the elders, uh, the apostles, and the early, the elders are the, uh, uh, the first fruits of the church, which is all inclusive in anybody who has been saved. Um, there may be people who think that they don't have to do anything for the Lord. They're, they're, they're saved and they, they just sit in the bus and are along for the ride. Um, that is not the case. Uh, everybody has a, a work, um, has been blessed with some a gift to be 
to give for the Lord to use in service. Um, Acts 20. All right, let's go to 21. Uh, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. So that encompasses what what the gospel is and what what we should be preaching uh, to the elders take ye therefore unto yourselves and to all the flocks over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseas to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood for I know this that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you not sparing the flock you also have your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone at night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. So the elders, the, the, the elders' responsibility was to take over the Holy Ghost in the Holy Ghost with the Holy Ghost they were the shepherds the overseers in Christ to feed to have the responsibility to feed the whole flock every and and that's been done they've completed that and they've all the food is preserved for us anyone coming along is inclusive within that responsibility once they reach a certain level of responsibility if they're able chosen to do so and they were all in, um, inclusive within that in the Holy Ghost in that responsibility within our liberty to take part um, bearing in mind that we read uh, Luke 17 bearing in mind verse 10 uh, so likewise ye when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you say we are unprofitable servants we have done that which was our duty to do Let's go to 1 Corinthians. So another important component in service uh, to know. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 to 7. Um, let's go to 5, 6 and 7. Uh, 4, 5, 6 and 7. For while one said, I am Paul, and another, I am Apollos, are ye not carnal? Um, who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers by whom ye believed even as the Lord gave to every man I have planted Apollos watered but God gave the increase so then neither is he that planteth anything neither he that watereth but God that giveth the increase so no matter what our service is towards the Lord whether we sow, whether we preach, whether we water, it's the Lord's work that we're serving in, in our liberty, in our gifts, in our lives, in our testimonies. And it's the Lord's work and it's his increase. We are unprofitable. There's nothing we can do by ourselves. Um, we need the Lord um, let's read some scriptures to uh, clarify that uh, let's go John 15 verse 4 and 5 abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Except it abide in the vine, 
no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what, what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. So that's what the Lord desires. And that's what the Lord warns if we don't. We are burnt. That doesn't mean we're going to hell. That means that we're burnt by the adversity. We, we lose the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And we have the Satan all over us. And, it, and that affliction will burn us. We'll, uh, we'll lose our confidence, our power, our testimony. And men will walk over us because we won't have a leg to stand on. Because we're not abiding in the Lord on the foundation that we've been placed on. So that's the warning, if we're not abiding in the Lord, which is his purpose to do his goodwill and pleasure f through us. So that, that shouldn't be um, a chore, that should be encouraging and, and something to rejoice in and grab hold of. But reality is the spirit is willing and the flesh is weak and we have to have that faith to overcome that adversity that's against us um, so let, um, let's look at these uh, let's look at the what it is the Lord has called us to do um, I just want to read two scriptures um, of what, which are warnings really um, what a believer comes across and what to be careful of uh, repeating uh, what the Lord warned of uh, Luke 12 verse 1 In the meantime when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another. He began to say unto his disciples, First of all, beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Uh, Mark, let's look at Mark 8. chapter verse 15 mark 8 verse 15 and he charged them saying take heed beware of the leaving of the pharisees and of the leaving of herod it's just something to consider in the mix uh, we know the leaving of the pharisees is hypocrisy as also would be the leaving of herod uh, also pride, I imagine. Um, anyway, I wanted to include that in the mix before I forgot. Right, so um, our responsibility in our liberty. Um, perhaps people believe that, you know, we're not called to share the gospel, we're not called to preach. Well, let's read some scriptures just to clarify. Mark 16 that it's every believer's responsibility to in their liberty to share the gospel um, their testimony however that is worked out in the Lord uh, for that person for that individual uh, Mark 16 verse 15 and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptised shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So the Lord's given the authority to the 
the early believers. I remember the el the elders of uh, the the uh, s placed on top of the Lord on the ro on the rock, the pillars on the on the cornerstone, and uh, believers are lively stones on top of that. So all all that's it, encompassing all the responsibility to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature anybody that's been built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ has got the response his heart and mind received his heart and mind to, for all men to be saved to, to use that your testimony to preach the gospel um, Look at Luke for uh, a testimony of what the Lord, Lord's heart is, and reiterated by uh, Luke and the Spirit of the Lord. Luke four, verse eighteen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty, liberty them that are bruised. And it's um, in Isaiah 61 verse 1, exactly the same. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted to pro proclaim liberty to the captives and to open the prisons to them that are bound. So there's a heart, the Lord's heart and mind there for um, all people. Uh, Luke 4.43 uh, And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. Acts 10 uh, and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead Romans 10 verse 15 and how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. First Corinthians chapter one verse seventeen For Christ sent me not to baptize but to preach the gospel not with wisdom of words lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. First Corinthians first Corinthians nine verse sixteen for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is me, unto me, if I preach not the gospel. And that was Paul speaking, but if we apply that to ourselves, woe is me if I share not my testimony, if I not preach the gospel, woe is me, because I'll be found wanting when, I, when I'm brought before the Lord. Um, Chapter 1 Corinthians 15, verse 11. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. So it's all's responsibility. Uh, Col Colossians 1, verse 28. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. So that was the heart of the ministry in Paul, in Christ, and which is all's responsibility on top of the foundation in Christ uh, to bring uh, to present all uh, every man tragic that not every man is going to be presented
perfect in Christ only every man that is saved uh, but that was the desire from the beginning whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man three times every man every man every man perfect in Christ Jesus One more, two more, a few more, right, a second, Timothy 4, 2, and I'll wrap it up, uh, second Timothy 4, 2, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Matthew twenty two verse nine. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished. And the uh, Luke fourteen twenty three. And the Lord said unto the servant. Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Now remember the Lord found people sitting around idle, and he went and gathered them and told them to go and uh, bid people into the, you know, into the, into the marriage, into the, into the Lord's house, that it may be filled. So that's our, that encompasses our mission is to invite people to receive what we've received simply repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ now you may not think that you you're equipped to do that or you have the authority to do that so I'm going to leave and close with um, two scriptures which uh, back up that we do have authority um, and there's many scriptures but I've chosen these two that we we are we are authorized the, the, the Lord has authorized us the Lord is our authorization the word the Holy Word is our authorization but we can't run before we can walk we, um, now if, if, laid in there as many components within the order of the way it's been unfolded in my life and the way, and how I found myself approved by working out my salvation laying hold of my salvation by the study of the word and coming to the knowledge of what it is I've received by the word from the word which is the word I've received and every believer has received this promise um, Psalm 149 Praise ye the Lord sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of the saints of saints let Israel rejoice in him that made him let the children of Zion be joyful in their king let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the trimble and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgments written this honour have all his saints praise ye the Lord um, do I need to elaborate on that let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Well, we know that's the word of God which we've received. 
to execute vengeance upon the heathen, to preach the gospel of repentance, the Holy Spirit will convict them, and punishments upon the people, to warn them of the consequences of rejecting Christ and living for sin, which will, figuratively speaking, bind their kings with chains. It will convict people, it will tie people up. They won't be able to function because the saints have the right, the Lord's authority to execute upon them the judgments written because they're the Lord's judgments. We're just telling the truth. We're just the messenger sharing the word. The two-edged the, uh, two sword in their hand, the holy scriptures, the word. To execute upon them the judgment written, this honour have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Um, and the last chapter, which is I've already read twice, but we'll read it one more time. And then I'll close. Uh, Titus. Now this is uh, authorising the believer to uh, rebuke. Um, to teach and to rebuke. Um, let's go from verse 11. Titus 2. And now Titus was sent. Now Titus was raised as an elder, like Paul. Raised up a believer, come unto salvation, was raised up with Paul by, by the Holy Spirit. And Paul sent him to raise other elders. To... Um, make disciples and to fill in the blanks where people lacked, where people were having problems. Titus was sent to service to, uh, because he was raised up to an elder, he was able to, the Lord was able to use him to raise other elders with him. That's the Lord's working through Titus. And this is the testimony of Titus. Uh, of of Paul to Titus and in Titus uh, of Jesus Christ for the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world looking for the blessed hope keeping our eyes single to the glory and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Saviour Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that we might he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous and good works these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority let no man despise thee to do all things in love uh, and I'm going to close there and, and leave those thoughts with you. I hope it's been a blessing to anybody listening and any any student of the word studying on, on any level. And uh, I'm going to close in the name of our Lord with, uh, with, with thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. Thanks to him. Amen.